So I have a question going back to optical flow. Um, can we can we go back and look at the uh, the flow net uh, slide, the first flow net slide? Yeah. So I think you probably talked about this when you were covering it last time, uh, but when we started reviewing it this time, I was kind of getting a little stuck, and I didn't want to ask a question because I wasn't sure what to ask. Um, but from what I remember from last lecture and what I've written down, these architectures are taking in um, or like the, the, okay, so the data set are image pairs um, and you're taking in like the first image of the pair and you're trying to predict the flow of it to the second image. Mm -hmm. Am I getting that right for the architecture? Yes. Okay. So how do we calculate the ground truth flow from just an image pair? Do we know pixel association in any way? Uh, the two images? So yeah, the ground truth, that's why you need to work with simulated data is that in your simulation, you know exactly how you changed this chair from one frame to the next one. So okay. you know the exact locations, how you're changing it. It means that you know the ground truth. Gotcha. So when in the, in the data set, it's image pairs plus a flow. Yes. So this is your okay. data set. Okay. Okay. So it's not just the two images consisting of the entire data set and you're getting the flow from the two images. You have a flow that's separate from the two. It's exactly the same thing that we were doing with image classification. So you have your training data, validation data, test data, and then you put your algorithm in production. You collect a lot of training data in this form. You train your algorithm. If there are any hyperparameters, like how deep your neural network should be, you are gonna use your validation data to set those hyperparameters. Now you have an algorithm that you can put in production. It's okay. gonna take a pair of images and input, and its task is to predict the flow for us. We don't want to recompute it. We want to have a surrogate for it. Okay. And that's the job of your neural network. You first test it, and then you can use it in production. Then okay. in production, the only thing that goes inside this algorithm are two images. And what's going to come out is a flow. Oh, and wait. So in this, in this flow net, it's taking in the, both images in the pair? Yes. So it's taking a concatenation of those two. It has six oh. channels rather than three channels. Okay. So, okay. I was, I was just a little confused because I was remembering that from this one that it was use the first image to calculate the flow and then from the flow we can calculate what the prediction for the second image is like kind of like treating the flow as a gradient no so that was me explaining what i mean by a flow okay okay the job of the flow is if you take this pixel use this flow it's going to give you an arrow if you use that arrow to transfer this location to another location in another image there is going to be a match it's going to give you the second image. So that's what? the definition of being a flow. Okay. But now your algorithm is actually trying to estimate your flow. So it's going to take two images and input, and it's going to output the corresponding flow. This is the unknown. Gotcha. Okay. It is known in your training data. It is known in your validation data. But it is an unknown when it comes to test and production. Okay, could you, so I was trying to think of ways that you could like iterate this process to make like a predicted video. Could you, if you were assuming that the flow stayed at least relatively constant between two frame iterations, could you use this flow to guess that this is the flow for kind of like that second image and then predict a third or like predict the next flow to get a third image, if that makes sense in any way? Actually it is. So you take this flow, First of all, for your algorithm to work, you need initially two images. Mm -hmm. You take those two images, you push it through this architecture, that's gonna give you the corresponding flow. Yeah. Now that you know your flow, you can take this image, the corresponding flow, that's gonna give you what the pixels are gonna be in your next image. It means that you are having now a predicted image. You take mm -hmm. this image and the predicted image, concatenate them, put them through your architecture, get the corresponding flow and keep repeating that pattern. Okay, okay. I'm not sure so, how good that's going to be in predicting the future. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'd assume it wouldn't be that good, but it's possible. But the way that people use optical flows is, let's say you have an input video 
and your task is what is that person doing in that video maybe mm -hmm. you want to put all of the videos corresponding to people jumping around in one bucket mm -hmm. and it's going to be easier when you're searching on the internet you are trying to organize the videos on youtube what are people doing that's action recognition you can look at your images or the frames in that video in addition to that as additional feature you can take these flows oh and then classify the flows yeah oh that's easy oh, that's that's not too bad interesting so that depends on the task okay one of them is actually telling us that if i look at these two images i know which objects are moving and perhaps i need to avoid them if you're a self-driving car or if you're a robot you need to avoid them they are coming close to you their distance is getting closer Okay. So this flow estimation and depth, they go hand in hand. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So it's just it's taking an image or taking image or images and using them to figure out um, something about the pixels yes. in that image, creating some kind of gradient, whether it's this type of vector field or for depth, just an estimation of relative distances from the viewer exactly. or from the sensor. Okay. And actually, next session, I'm going to go through a paper that's going to combine all of these together. It's going to combine flow estimation. It's going to combine videos. It's going to combine 3D and depth to perhaps come up with better depth estimation. Okay. okay. Gotcha. 